Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Racing Bet Preview. I'm your host, Tim Gears, joined by Trent Krebin. This week, we are very pleased to welcome on board one of the big fish in the betting world, the TAB. They're joining us for the Spring Carnival, so we're very excited to have them on board. Trent, they're going to um, support the side over the next couple of months throughout the big races across the Spring Carnival and uh, support the site and the show going forward. So we welcome on the tab on board and we'll be bringing you their betting markets for Group 1 George Main Stakes Day and also Group 1 Sir Rupert Clark Stakes Day. A big weekend ahead at Caulfield and Randwick. Trent? Yeah, it's an absolutely huge day. Great to have the TAB on board. Look, I think the, the features in, in both states are massive as well. I think the other big races, the shorts in Sydney, that's an outstanding field of sprinters. That's probably the race I'm keen as to watch. The Sir Rupert Clark stakes as well. Behemoth, Probabil, Bo Rossa, I'm Thunderstruck has just made the field um, coming through in the last couple of hours as well. So that's an outstanding race. Can't wait to get stuck in. Yeah, uh, just cracking races everywhere you look this weekend. I think, as you said, at Caulfield, we've got both Guineas Preludes. We've got the Naturalism, the How Now, the Sir Rupert Clark stakes. And in Sydney at Randwick, we've got the Bill Ritchie, the T-Rose, the Kingston Town, the George Main, and as you alluded to, the Shorts. And we will touch on the Shorts a little bit later on the show because we do have a unique market to bring for you uh, from the tab this weekend. But we'll be taking you through our best bets at Caulfield and Randwick, our best value bets at both tracks, and we'll take a look at both feature races, the Group 1s in both Melbourne and Sydney, um, and we'll touch on a couple of those other races as well. Now, we were going to come to you live this week, but we've put that on the shelf just for a further week. We will be going live next week, but we just had a few things crop up unexpectedly this time around, uh, which prevented us from doing so. But stay tuned. We will make sure we go live next week. Uh, Trent, how do you expect the track to play at Caulfield on the weekend? Yeah, look, I think it should play fairly typically Caulfield. Rail out six metres. Track probably stays in the good four range with a, a bit of give in it. Probably don't want to be too far back. Um, they might edge off the fence a little bit later, but generally fair. Okay, and I think at Randwick, uh, we're playing on a soft deck this week. There's relatively fine weather ahead. Uh, the track currently a soft six. The rail is out seven metres from the 1,600 metres to the winning post and four metres to the remainder. So hopefully plays fair. Um, yeah, as I said, soft six at the moment, but I would expect improvement throughout the day. Okay, let's get into our best bets to kick things off, Trent. We'll start with you at Caulfield. And your best bet is going to come up in race six, number three. You're with a horse called Anavisto. Currently $2.15 with the tab. I think it's already been backed in from bigger odds. Yeah, it was. I kind of had a bit of a snipe at the early price there with the tab. I think they opened about $2.80 from memory. I think she's clearly the horse to beat here. I had her as, had her as a horse to follow in our review article. Um, she, review, um, she resumed first up with a, a really good run behind Churath, who has since come out and won at group two level. You see there, she kind of does a little bit wrong in the straight there in the light blue colours. It gets really close on the line. That can be her. She can do a little bit wrong. But I think with that run under the belt, she's going to have the freshness taken off of her. She's got the class of this field. She's, she maps well. I think she's just clearly the horse to beat, and she's she just stands out as the best bet on the program when you know there are a lot of open races. I think she's going to be super hard to beat, Ana Visto. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tarath's come out and won again since then, hasn't it? Yes, I just said that as you were playing the um, playing the replay. She's come out and won at Group 2 level since in the Let's Elope last Saturday. So clearly the form stacking up all around her. That run first up was huge. She's only going to improve off of that, and I think she is very hard to beat. Sorry, mate, I'm playing producer, trying to get replays over the top. I'm, my brain functionality is not, not that superior. Uh, so that's Trent's best bet of the day at Caulfield Race 6, number three, Anna Visto. We'll move on to my best bet bet of the day at Ramwick. I'm going to save this for the lucky last. Race 10, horse number 12, equation for Annabelle Neesham and that man, J-Mac, James McDonald. This horse has had five career starts. I'll try and explain as I play another replay over the top here. Five career starts. This replay is its last start um, in the Canberra Guineas. This was 27 weeks ago, over 1,400 metres. Beat a horse called High Supremacy. I think that's a decent form line. Um, as I said, five starts, four wins. You can't do much more than that. And its defeat did come on debut in a handy race behind the likes of Peltzer, um, an overlord and a two-year-old handicap at Randwick. So we obviously know Peltzer's gone on to be a pretty decent um, horse in his career. And since that defeat, Equation has gone on to win four straight. First up, no trial here, but I don't think J-Mac would be jumping on necessarily if it wasn't ready. So his booking um, is encouraging. 
I think this is a pretty good starting point for him. I think he finds a, a field that he can um, take care of first up. So happy to stick with him. He is a Colt. Um, so obviously they've got a pretty high opinion of him, obviously owned by Aquas. So they would uh, be hoping he can go on to be um, a pretty good horse, onto bigger and better things uh, for their stud roster. So, yeah, making him my best of the day. Race 10, number 12 equation, currently $3.40 with the TAB. All right, something for the punters at odds. Trent, your best value bet of the day at Caulfield comes up. Race three, you're with horse number 10, Daisies, at $19 with the tab. Yeah, I am. So this is the 1,000 guineas prelude, 1,400 metres. And it's just been it's um, been well known that the Phillies kind of have been a quite an even bunch in the three-year-old division this year, kind of quite um, can't really have the wood over them in the in the Colts. And I think we're just you just got to look for the different form here. And I think Daisies really brings that. She... Ran on debut at Mornington over 1,200 metres. I think that was a really strong maiden. It was won by a horse called Frontman, who was contesting some of the, the better two-year-old and three-year-old races last prep. This horse got back, um, kind of was a little bit green as well. She really rocketed home late to run fourth. She ran the fastest fast, six, 400 and 200 of that race. I think up to 1,400 metres is really going to suit. Like I said, I don't think these fillies with that exposed kind of city form, heresy, scorched earth, kind of... They've, they're talented fillies, but I just don't think that they're that much better than the horses coming out of these maiden BM64 grades. So at the odds, $19, I think, with the tab, um, I'm very happy to be with Daisies each way, and I think she's going to run a big race for us. Okay, and my best value bet of the day, I'm actually going to stick with the Annabelle Nation J-Mac combination. I'm with a horse in race number five. This is horse number two called Numerian. He's on his Australian debut here, previously did his racing in Ireland. So the 21 starts for three wins and uh, nine minor placings. Really strange kind of um, setup here. We've seen him race over further than this over the likes of 2,000 metres. He has won over 2,000 metres before. He resumes first up here with just the one trial under the belt over 1,400 metres. It kind of is a, a horse that you can draw comparisons to the likes of Zaki. Now, I'm not saying he is Zaki or anywhere near as good as Zaki, but we saw a similar kind of setup from Zaki when he came over from from Europe, he had been racing over further. He was, uh, he came to Australia and ran first up in the Doncaster Mile, if I'm correct. Probably uh, sent shivers down your spine there, Trent. But we saw him resume over the shorter distance, and he ran exceptionally well in that race. And of course, has gone on to be a complete superstar. Now, I'm not saying this horse is going to be a superstar, but um, it was entered for Newcastle. And I think one of the features um, today, that being Friday, they scratched it out of that race in order to run Saturday. So. I think if, they, uh, if they've if they got a decent opinion of this horse, that's the reason why they're going to run on Saturday. And um, she wastes no time putting J-Mac on board. And I doubt J-Mac would be jumping on this horse first up 1,400 metres if he didn't think it had some sort of ability. So, yeah, just thought at $19 with the tab, um, he was an intriguing horse. And I'll be happy to have something small on him in what does look a very uh, competitive race. Uh, that's race five, horse number two, New Mirian. Okay, the feature of the day, Trent, in Melbourne is the Group 1 Sir Rupert Clark Stakes at Caulfield. Uh, I'll pull the market up from the tab, and you can take us through your thoughts uh, while I do this. Yeah, it's a really strong race. I've been looking forward to this for quite a few weeks um, since the kind of early nominations have come out. But I think there's probably four winning chances. You've got the big three up at the near the top of the weights. Horse number one, Behemoth. Horse number two, Probabil. And horse number five, Bo Rossa. Now, I'm with Bo Rossa in this race. I've had him kind of earmarked for this race for quite a while. He comes out of the Memsey Stakes, uh, where he ran second to Behemoth. That was at weight for age level, so he was only getting half a kilo off that horse. And I thought that he was a touch unlucky in that race. He drew barrier one. He kind of had to get off heels when Behemoth got a, a great ride from Brett Preble. You just see there um, Behemoth with all the momentum coming in. Linda Meach on Bo Rosser in the kind of blue and green trying to get off his back there. I think with even luck, he probably wins that race. And it just makes him three and a half kilos better here at the handicap condition. So, you know, there's a lot to like about Bo Rosser here. Barrier one again, which is not ideal. Um, but I'm just kind of hoping for a change of luck here. The interesting thing to note as well. Um, you know, the main danger probably is is probably will draw barrier two and then behemoth drawn barrier three. So they could be a very interesting scenario here where the three of them are kind of all searching for runs at the top of the straight. And I'm just hoping that Linda Meach um, with the lightweight can can make the, the most use of that and get Bo Rossa through. The other horse I just want to quickly touch on has just made the field with a scratching coming out is number 17. I'm Thunderstruck. Um, a lot of X Factor, a lot of hype about him. 
His last two wins have been very good. He gets down on the minimum weight. And traditionally in the Rupert Clark, uh, low weights have been advantaged. Draws very wide, so he's going to have to go right back, but he is going to be charging at them late. Whether he's quite good enough at this stage of his career to beat those those big guns in the market, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, he's, he's very talented and he'll give this a shake. Yeah, currently $7 with the tab after, go, after gaining a run. I'm thunderstruck. Um, favoritism currently lies with Probabil, $4.80. Then by Rossa, as you spoke about, Trent, $5.50 out to 650 uh, behemoth. Give me your thoughts on where you saw Samistat in this field. He's currently a $31 chance coming over from the West. Yeah, look, he's obviously quite tricky to line up. Um, yeah, like some of his form over there would be would be somewhat competitive. He ran, I think he ran fifth in a railway, only beaten about a length and a half by Regal Power. That form you can, you know, Regal Power's running very well in Melbourne, obviously. So I think that run would put him somewhere in this field. His last run was a bit plain, I thought, at Belmont behind too close to the sun. Um, the win first up in the Belmont new market was good. Look, he's probably not the worst roughy, um, but I would struggle to see him beating these these really seasoned group one horses in Melbourne. Yeah, wouldn't mind a drop of rain, definitely. Um, you know, look at his wet record, seven starts, five wins and a minor placing. So yeah. um, he would definitely like a little bit of rain. Amish Boy at fifteen dollars. Uh, he was very good behind Mask Crusader. He's he's a horse of mine. He's one of my boyfriends, but um, he doesn't win often, does he? No, and that's the query. Look, he was he was a bit unlucky behind Mask Crusader. Um, and you know, you can make a case for him. I think fourteen hundred meters is probably a good trip for him. He's been dealt no favors with the barrier draw. The barrier fifteen. He's going to have to go quite a fair way back and give these horses a head start. He's a definite place chance. It'd shock me if he managed to beat all three of the ones in the market, but it definitely wouldn't shock for me to see him um, nab third. Mm. Yeah, he is one of mine. He just doesn't get much luck. Gee, he's been rorted by draws and luck throughout his career. But, yeah, yeah uh, fascinating race and a crack, cracking race at, at that. Um, can't wait to see it. Over in Sydney, our feature of the day is the Group 1 George Main Stakes, uh, one of a couple of ripping races on the card. Um, I'll try and pull up this market as I talk. To be honest, I have this basically a two-horse race train. It'll be uh, fascinating to get your thoughts on the race as well. But as you can see by the market with Tab, we've got very elegant odds on a dollar and ninety cents, followed by Think It Over at four sixty, and then you're out to double figure odds. The rest um, closest being Colding at ten dollars. I'm with I'm with the market here. I thought this is basically a two-horse race, very elegant, and Think It Over as I try and get this off and play a replay if I can find the right one. Um, We'll play the replay of the Wink Stakes. I think this is it. Yep. Uh, this one, of course, won by Mwonga, who we saw go to Melbourne, run well once again behind Incentivise last week. Very elegant. She was very good in this. Very brave as always. First up uh, to the mile. She gets wet ground or, or, you know, at least a little bit of cut in the track. Um, and an ideal barrier draw. I've seen a few people saying barrier two doesn't suit her, but I can just see her getting the run of the race here. J Mac will do what he needs to do to get off the rail and get her into the race. Um, and I thought her only danger was Think It Over, who, of course, ran behind her in the wink stakes, didn't have much luck on that occasion. And then he went uh, to this race, which we're playing over the top, this being the Chelmsford Stakes, back on the 4th of September, and he managed to run down Riadini, who looked to have the race um, pass it up. I thought this was a really good effort to really dig in late and run down Riadini. The query being out of that race is that Riadini was going absolutely shocking leading into that race, um, which kind of puts some sort of query over the form. We had Montefilia finishing off back into third, but I think think it over. Like the last two preparations, he's really stamped himself as a genuine Group 1 horse. He's got a terrific third-up record, four starts, two wins, two second placings. Obviously, he goes very well at the track and distance. And uh, if there is any chinks in Very Elegant, this boy will be winning, um, make no doubt about that. So, yeah, I thought it was a two-horse race, uh, think it over and Very Elegant. At the prices, I think they're probably about right, and I'd be leaning towards backing Very Elegant, not really uh, put off by her being odds on. You're a very elegant man. She's firmly in your girlfriend uh, file. How did you see her in this race? Well, I think she's in most Australian horse racing fans, girlfriend file, to be honest. Um, she's a star. Look, I thought the run in the winks was very good. She was basically three wide the trip, refused to lie down. I think she's very hard to beat. Um, the price is probably about right. She has been well backed with the tab as well. I think she opened 
um, in black odds 220 or so. I thought maybe you could make a small case for Hungry Heart. She comes out of the wink stakes as well. And I, she kind of was it back in the ruck there and almost she got into a bit of a bumping jewel at the top of the straight with a few of those. Um, I think Think It Over was one of them as well. And I thought she picked up through the line really well. Whether 1,600 metres is far enough for her, she might be better over a bit further. But um, I thought she was maybe a bit of overs there. But very elegant, definitely on top. Very hard to beat. And I'll probably end up backing her. Yeah, you're right there. Two dollars twenty, she opened with the tab very elegant into a dollar ninety, and yeah, I'm sharing a similar thought pattern there with Hungry Heart. I thought definitely second up sixteen hundred would probably just find her out a little bit sharp for these uh, mm. for her against these better horses. But you know, once she gets up to two thousand meters, she'll be ready to rock and roll. I think. Now, I did say before that uh, we had something lined up for the shorts. Um, this is just an unbelievably good race. Um, I know it's a bit of a taster for the Everest in a couple of weeks' time, but we've got Nature Strip, Eduardo, Gitra, Mask Crusader, Rothfire, Lost and Running, Handle the Truth, and Adelong. Um, where do you start with this race? I, I suppose you have to start with Nature Strip. And speaking of boyfriends, he's probably at the top of your list. But like, you could make a genuine case for the first, um, you know, the first six here. Uh, Nature Strip, Eduardo, of course, Eduardo first up last preparation ran down Nature Strip, who was second up. Gitra has a first up win over Nature Strip. Mars Crusader was absolutely enormous first up in Melbourne. Rothfire, he what did he start favourite in a Golden Rose or uh, something along yep. those lines? Yeah, started dollar sixty in a dollar sixty in a Golden Rose. Looked horrible. Yeah, and from, and unfortunately injured himself, but he has trialed enormously as well. So yeah, and yeah, speaking of enormous trials, speaking of enormous lost trials, and lost and running was a, was huge, uh, huge you know trials. just about giving classic legend uh, Windburn on in his most recent trial, um, albeit that was his second trial and Classic Legend was just having his first hit out. But, gee, they don't trial any better than what he did, he did and we're getting $10 about him. So uh, I'm going to pass the ball to you. Um, take me through your thoughts and, and where you kind of sit with the shorts here. Are you betting? Because I can't find a bet in this race. It's too hard. Yeah, look, it, it is almost one you'd put into too hard. I thought Nature Strip first up was huge. I think that's probably... Even though he won the Lightning first up in the autumn, but that the first up win, um, I think it was in the Concord, was dominant. He never got out of second gear, I don't think. Eduardo beat him first up last prep. That was over a thousand meters, though, and I think Eduardo is probably better suited to a thousand meters than Nature Strip is these days. Um, you still kind of saw when Eduardo got out to eleven twelve hundred that Nature Strip was starting to have his measure. Gitra is a really interesting one. He's kind of maybe been a bit a little bit out of form. He kind of had that run in the Goodwood. He wasn't too bad. And then he kind of failed in, the, I think it was the Kingford, Kingsford Smith in Queensland. But he's got a really good first up record as well. He's come in for a bit of support. Mars Crusade, you just can't knock him as well. He's really made that step to, you know, an elite talent. Not really sure what to do with him. I've always held the notion that um, Nature Strip's a better horse than him, and I stand by that. So... You know, I probably have to be in Nature Strip's corner. Rothfire's the X factor. I don't know what to do with him. He's almost had a year off. I'd mm. potentially just want to watch him. And I think Lost and Running, he's trialed exceptionally well. I'd want to see him take that next step. You know, the horses he's been beating, while he's been doing it in very good fashion, win against True Detective before the end of uh, at the end of last prep. So I'd want to see him just take that next step. So I'd have to just kind of default back to Nature Strip. Probably... Um, yeah, ahead of Eduardo and Guy try just at the prices, but yeah, next trip's definitely in the boyfriend in the boyfriend file. He's the screensaver on the phone and the laptop. He is a superstar. I think he's the horse to beat, and I hope he wins this and goes on to win the Everest, win the Everest as well. It's just a race where I reckon post race you're gonna like. There'll be so many people looking back saying, "How did they bet this about this horse?" Like, there's probably yeah. six of them that they could be saying that about post race. So. I'm going to yeah. sit back, grab a beer, enjoy the race um, because yeah. I just I just don't want to bet because, as I said, it's just impossible for me and um, I'm just going to enjoy watching the good horses run around. But I do have a question for you, okay? Hmm. Does Very Elegant run top three? I'd be very shocked unless she got completely bottled up on the inside. I think she will definitely run top three. Does Nature Strip run top three? Well, Nature Strip probably wins, so... Yeah, he'll, he'll be running top three. He's too good not to. 
Well, there's a unique betting market with the tab this weekend, which is Very Elegant and Nature Strip to both run in the top three. $2.50. Um, you're saying it's as good as a good thing. Um, max bet 50 bucks. It may not be available to everyone, so make sure you do check the TNCs. But you'll find this as a unique market. Head to tab.com.au, $2.50 for Very Elegant to run top three in the George Main and Nature Strip to run top three in the shorts at Ramwick this Saturday. All right, that just about wraps us up for this week. Anything that I've missed, Trent, before we uh, sign off for another week? No, I think that does us. Um, yeah, outstanding card of racing um, in both states. Can't wait to, to get stuck in and we'll be back to do it again next week. Yeah, we will. And, um, yeah, we'll have Ramwick covered, Caulfield covered. We'll have some best bets from Belmont. Um, I went to Northern with Sheeran McGrady on Thursday. There was about... Actually, it's quite it's quite vibrant for a Thursday at Northern. There was probably fifty people on track, and uh, one of my mates was doing the bookmaking. Scotty McCormack, good fella, Scotty, and uh, we went there for one ride. Man, shooter Metalon, Metalon on in race uh, race two, and uh, there's not much action in the bookies ring at Northern on a on a Thursday. Um, but we knew the tip was around when about half a dozen of the owners started lining up at the bookmakers saying, can I have 250 on Metallon at $7, 250 at 650, 250 at six. And they were just lining up and Scotty looked at me and said, uh, what's all this about? I said, mate, I don't know. And, uh, there he was absolutely <laughs> bolting in by about four lengths. And, um, that was us done back in the car and back home. So that was a good day. I didn't have a cent on myself. I was just happy to sit back and watch, but, uh, yeah, let's hope, uh, let's hope our best bets all win like Metallon did at Northern on Thursday. Next week, we will be going live. As I've said, um, we thank the tab for their support on this show. We're looking forward to having them on board going forward for the rest of the Spring Carnival. And, uh, yeah, as I said, if you're keen on Very Elegant and Nature Strip, jump on the tab.com.au. You'll find a unique market for both of them to run in the top three. Okay, we'll be back to do it all again next week. Group 1 Racing continues, and we are heading right into the thick of the spring.